So lots to play for, early days. That wraps into crypto. Crypto is my chosen horse. It out outperforms everything in this type of cycle. Like technology, it's driven by debasement of the central banks of the fiat currency market, particularly the world's uh, reserve currency of the dollar, but all of them together, really. And in addition, it's driven by the secular trend. The adoption trend of crypto is huge. It's now 425 million wallets. It keeps going up every single year. Even last year in a bear market, it grew 40%. So. And in the next coming years, we will probably get that number up to a billion pretty fast. In this video, Real Vision CEO and billionaire investor Raul Palm gives us an inside look into his personal holdings. This unprecedented opportunity allows us to see exactly what a billionaire thinks is worth investing in. Raul also provides the reasoning for his asset allocation, allowing us to make more informed decisions. Raul starts off the video by explaining that, contrary to what the media and Fed monetary policy might suggest, he's fairly confident that things are only looking up. And irrespective of what current market prices might say, he's convinced that in 12 to 18 months, we'll be in a financial bull market. I, I think that in the, you know, sometime in the next 12, 18 months, you know, Bitcoin can be over 150,000. I don't think this bull run is over. I think that uh, we have more to go. He later doubles down on these concepts before discussing his asset allocation. Let's dive right in. So the forward looking indicators are suggesting all of this goes up from here onwards. My view is that we will see, as I said, rate cuts to come. The Fed are purposefully late because they need to get all inflation expectations crushed. The one year break even already. So that's expectation of inflation one year in advance, already about 1.3%. So it's come right down. The true inflation, inflation gauge of current inflation is about 2.1% this morning. I think we break through 2% in the coming month and on our way to zero. So I think inflation is forward looking inflation is zero. PPI is zero. PPI across Europe is negative. PPI in China is negative. PPI leads CPI. CPI is going to head lower. And of all of you going, yeah, but what about wages and what about rents and core sticky? It's always lagged. It is every single time lagged. It's purposely lagged, just the definition of how these things work. So we are seeing already forward-looking indicators of rents coming down. The core CPI is mainly driven by that. That's what the services inflation is. Wages are already deflating, starting to come lower, and we will see ongoing deflation from that. So it's kind of all to play for here. Early cycle, this is the spring, the macro spring. We call it the GMI spring, that quadrant where growth stocks take off, all the growthy stuff happens, inflation is falling, unemployment's falling, and growth is basing and starting to pick up. We will see that the forward looking indicators, even the ISM, the simple stuff like the ISM, new orders index, those kind of things, inventories and new orders are starting to pick up. It's all over the place. And look, the Fed know it, they're not stupid. They know that the cycle turned a long time ago. They know the forward looking indicators where they are. They know inflation lags, but as I said, really for them, is to undershoot inflation. That's not my, now my core view is they want to undershoot because it gives them the excuse to fire the bullets that they want to fire. Unemployment will rate, rise. It won't rise as much as other cycles because structurally there are just less people in the labor force. And so there's so many retirees. When you look at aggregate total economy, it's a very different picture. So I think unemployment rises percent, percent and a half and um, inflation continues low. That's a very supportive backdrop more cowbell, more printing to cover the interest payments on the um, on the debts that they're rolling forward. So far, Raul has discussed macroeconomics. He's explained why even though forward-looking indicators are looking up, rates are tightening. He explains that the Fed is tightening rates in spite of the easing of real inflation in order to exceed expert expectations. He, however, does not expect this to continue much longer. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said in November, that current monetary policy is restrictive, suggesting that perhaps the Fed will ease up in the coming months. Based on these indices, Raul predicts that we're in macro spring and that there's significant growth to come. Let's head back in to look at exactly what assets he's buying. This is the most hated rally of, I've ever seen, and I've seen some hated rallies. 2009 was another classic. It is my view that last year, when the NASDAQ, S&P, the bond market, commodities, everything collapsed. That was the pricing in of the recession by those. And I do enormous amounts of work. We probably have one and a half thousand charts, plus a macro model, plus a bunch of stuff with Global Macro Investor, where we look into this. We saw from our forward-looking indicators what was going to happen. And we also then have been expecting 
the lagged effect of the economy to come through. We also noted that markets were somewhat forward-looking and that they would start rallying once liquidity started coming in, which is part of the Everything Code. We'll go a little bit through the Everything Code. And so that has exactly been playing out. We were buyers of Ethereum back in June, thinking that the global liquidity cycle at the bottom and ETH was the leader of the entire cycle. That bottomed in June, did not bottom again in October, while everything else bottomed in October. I remember putting out some tweets for people talking about it's usually the bear killer month. You usually get a bear market and it usually dies in October. And that's what happened as liquidity came into the market. So that got me very constructive and bullish first on crypto because that's my chosen asset allocation. We'll come on to that later because I think it's the fastest horse in the race. The race is all about debasement, which is the everything code. It's not about liquidity that a lot of people talk about on Twitter. I'm less interested in that. I'm interested in the debasement of global currency by the world's central banks. Liquidity is a factor, obviously, within all of this, and that comes up and down with the business cycle. But And we'll come on to the debasement cycle later. So by January, February, I've, I've been buying everything from Nasdaq to Microsoft to Tesla to Coinbase to KR1 in the UK to a whole bunch of these semiconductors over time, just buying all of these things on my thesis that the exponential age in technology. So I bought crypto first, then technology. Crypto is by far the biggest bet. Technology was going to be the, the second fastest horse. Now, what's proven out so far this year, I can blow my own trumpet for a little bit for once because I get so much abuse anyway, is um, so if I look at Solana, which is one of my bets, it's up 170% this year. Bitcoin's up 81%, ETH's up 60%. Meanwhile, over in the exponential age in equity land, that's up 73% this year and uh, NASDAQ's up 45 And we said that, you know, the other horses to back weren't back, worth backing. S&P's up 18%, so the NASDAQ's done two and a half X, what the S&P's done. So the thesis seems to be playing out. And I think that continues into 2026. So I still see a lot of people expecting the second bare leg lower. I don't think that's coming. Of course, we will get corrections. We'll probably get a scare along the way too, where everybody thinks the world's gonna end. But I don't see anything but an ongoing forward-looking liquidity cycle and business cycle. In this video, Raul has explained his reasoning for why he believes we're only headed up. He's provided unique insight into the exact assets he's buying and why. Raoul's everything code and exponential age theory form the basis of his predictions, and with each passing day, they seem more and more prophetic than predictive. Raoul's assertion that the recession is behind us becomes realer every day. The unfortunate reality is that it is certain that the debasement of currency will cause a surge in available capital, and while this will send asset prices optically higher, the base currency will lose more and more of its value, which will negate or even supersede the numerical gains from most investments. This is why Raoul and other experts believe that only cryptocurrency provides a medium to not only store, but also grow your wealth, especially as adoption fueled by the spot ETFs heat up. What do you think about Raoul's picks? To see the latest in crypto news, watch this video here.